Hey, y'all, this is JR of the R&B Representatives. Shout out to my sister, Natalie Elise. And this is the third episode of JR's Motown Life. The song that I decided to talk about on this one is The Temptations Ain't Too Proud to Beg. <laughs> Ain't too proud to be, baby, baby. Please don't leave me, girl. Don't you go. So this song was released in 1966, written by Norman Whitfield and Eddie Holland of Holland, Doja Holland. And it was produced by Norman Whitfield. It peaked at number 13 on the pop charts and number one on the R&B charts. Now, listen, it is a lot of fun facts and a lot of things you should know about Ain't Too Proud to Beg. You know what I mean? So sit down, got you a seat. Let me give y'all some facts and some fun facts about the record. You know what I mean? Um, So this is 1966. By this time, The Temptations is cranking out hits from their main producer, which was Smokey Robinson. He has done The Way You Do the Things You Do, Since I Lost My Baby, My Girl. But Norman Whitfield was kind of in the background, kind of giving them them nice album cuts and B-sides, which he gave me uh, The Girls All Right With Me. He gave um, A Girl Why You Want to Make Me Blue. Like, he was doing a lot of those. He was getting a lot of B-sides, you know what I mean? So Smokey was the Tim's producer, and that's just what it was, you know what I mean? But, um... By this time, the guys are ready to put out a new album, you know, and um, Norman was, you know, throwing in some songs. He, you know, he started producing some songs with the guys, and then he gave it to Motown's Quality Control. Now, Motown's Quality Control is a bunch of executives. They listen to a song, producers as well, and if they like it, and majority of the people like it, Barry will release it as a hit. So the first time Norman Whitfield entered uh, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Nobody liked it. Boom. He re he did it again. They didn't like it. But Barry actually liked it. You know what I mean? He was like, it's something about it, but I feel like there's something missing. So um, he got back with uh, Eddie Holland, and Eddie Holland was like, yo, you know you're not going to end up being their main producer because Barry and Smokey are close, and that just ain't happening. But Norman was like, I think I know what to do. So he got the guys together, and what he did was he had David sing out of his key. Like, he was like, he had David singing up here. And even Otis in his book said, by the time they were finished with that record, David was sweating all in the studio. Like, he worked to get this vocal for this record. You know what I mean? And it was like, the Timps liked it. They liked the sound of it. They loved it. They was like, okay, this seems like a hit. Boom, boom, boom. So, you know, they recorded Get Ready with um, Smokey. And this time, you know, David is on, lead, not David, uh, Eddie's on lead. Eddie's on the lead. So finally, it's like, you know what? This is two hit songs. Everything is going to be cool. Uh, they send Motown, they, they send, uh, get ready to the Motown quality group. They loved it. Became the single. They sent ain't too proud to beg again. They, they bombed on it again. Norman Whitfield was pissed. Cause he was like, are you kidding me? But Barry liked something about it. Barry was like, ah, oh, it's something about this song that, that I like. So he said, I tell you what, if get ready does not peak in the top 20, I'm going to release ain't too proud to beg as the next single. And it actually happened. And uh, Get Ready peaked at 29. And Ain't Too Proud to Bed peaked at 13. And the thing at Motown, whoever produces song peaks higher on the charts become the main producer. So Norman ended up becoming The Temptations' main producer after Ain't Too Proud to Bed. Because before then, it was Smokey. But since Ain't Too Proud to Bed peaked, Higher than Get Ready, Norman Whitfield became the main producer, which I think was amazing because time, sound was changing and that sound that Smokey was giving them was kind of becoming a little outdated a little bit. So it was like, you know, Norman knew the streets and he knew what this generation, this new generation was kind of feeling, something a little more grittier, you know what I mean? And obviously David given that grit because that's what David has, you know what I mean? So... These guys didn't even know they were on the road when this song became a hit. They didn't know it was a hit until they got to American Bandstand and they had to perform it because it was a hit. 
So you never know what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to these hit songs that we all love. You know what I mean? But that was the moment that Norman Whitfield became the Temptations main producer after that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so many people actually covered this song. The California Raisins is my favorite. It takes me back to my South Carolina days when my mom got that um, VHS from Blockbuster. Uh, my mom went to South Carolina State University. So, it just takes me back there. You know, the California Raisins did so many, you know, uh, Motown records. They did Ain't Too Proud to Beg. They did uh, Stevie Sounds Still Delivered. So it just takes me back there. So I love their version. The Rolling Stones actually did it. Um, ZZ Hill did it. Um, Willie Mitchell did it. And actually, Rick Ashley actually did it as well. My grandfather loved Nick, uh, Rick Ashley. He loved him. It just brings me back to the, you know, the... Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch days, we used to go out there and he used to have to hear, you know, Rick Ashley because he loved his voice, you know what I mean? So I love this set, his, his cover on it too. But, yo, this song is a tip staple. When you think about, like, their top five hits, Ain't Too Proud to Beg is going to be in it. Probably going to go to My Girl and then you're going to go to Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Hell, they even have the musical as you know, titled Ain't Too Proud to Beg. But this song is amazing, it's dope, but y'all just heard so how so much stuff went behind us knowing this song because it might not would have happened if Barry didn't like it and didn't promise Norman Whitfield that he would put it out. So there's so many things that go behind the song, but this song is a staple. It's so great. You know what I mean? And I think everybody loves it because it's first, as soon as you hear, I know you want to leave me. Now, every time I think about it, I just think about David Ruffin just sweating up in the studio. Might have for other things, but he was sweating. You know what I mean? But y'all, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. I don't like to keep y'all a little long, but I kept y'all a little, maybe a minute longer so hopefully you guys y'all go jam to ain't too proud to beg and i will see y'all next week on the next episode of jr's motown life peace